not. Making light I haven't gotten into my points. I'm not making of people that look like us. You can't All make right. light of that. That ain't nothing you breathe over. I haven't even over. finished the sentence. How am I making you light of anything? You started with some bullshit. Okay. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be watching one of the great debate performances and probably the most underrated performance of our time. And it's one that I've covered before when I was a younger man, but we had some sound and some technical issues and it's been eating away at me. So I had to remake it with a new spin. So let's introduce the panelists, starting with Candace Owens. And just for some context, guys, Revolt began as an annual event inspired by Revolt Music Conference has transformed into a huge moment for black people to come together through culture and community in the world of hip hop. And even in 2020, Biden got 90% of the black vote in America. So there is no love in this room for MAGA Candace Owens. Let's get into it. Um, I would say the biggest issue this election cycle is that we're starting to hear the word socialism a lot in America. Um, and it is something that I don't think people quite understand what it is. It's killed 100 million people in the last 100 years. If you look at countries like Venezuela, former USSR, um, and we have people that are making it sound good, which is how these countries tend to vote socialism into their countries before it completely uh, destroys everything the country has. And I would say the second biggest thing for me is that um, I'm getting tired of the Democrat Party drumming up uh, the same issues every four years, taking advantage of the black vote and doing absolutely nothing to fix our communities and expecting us to vote for them again. Next speaker is Killer Mike, who is one half of the hip hop group Run the Jewels and is also a political and social activist. When we talk about what's our important issues, a lot of times a lot of us try to cover broad ground. So I'm supporting Senator Sanders. If you want to know my broad ground answers, it's, it's within his campaign. But from a very acute and very where we are standpoints, African Americans have to be bigger part of the economic landscape of this country. We should be owners and not buyers. We should be a merchant class and not only consumers. We should have and we should use our political leverage power to leverage and broker government contracts on the behalf of us so that we have 15 Atlantas and not one Atlanta. You should be hunting, fishing, shooting, training, and focusing on self self-reliance and not simply relying on the people you say to hate to take care of you. So some fantastic points there. And the last speaker that we will introduce for the sake of time is rapper T.I. Um, so to me, I think the main, I'm going I'm to I'm run down a list of things, but they all kind of go coincide together. Uh, I think that homegrown terrorism and, and, and crazy white boys with AR-15 shooting up innocent people. Um, I also think mass incarceration, the privatized prison industry, the militarization of police and how they interact with the people in our communities um, and, and police brutality. I think all of those things, although they seem separate, I think they coincide. I think they correlate. Thank you, Mike. So some okay points there and some attempts to get brownie points as well. I mean, white boys with guns. I really don't think you want to be playing that game because if we're going to be talking about skin color and gun violence, I really don't think that the numbers are going to be in your favor. On to the next. How is the best way to engage a two-party system? I'm on the black side of the aisle. Well, we talk we, to are, me we about represent it. two different candidates, talk to me about it. but I'm on the black side of the aisle. I'm on the side wherever the good potato salad is. You know? <laughs> So we, we, we just, I'm going to let my sister speak first, but I want everyone to know my political interests start and end with how I grew up in Atlanta. So it's just a little foolish for us to say that we don't inspire children by saying someone died for your right, because the people who oppose you glorify their heroes. I am a proud American. Let me say that first. I have no problem saying that because I am provided an opportunity in this country that I travel around the world other black men and women don't have. Now, it is my responsibility to take that opportunity and create more opportunities by way of economy, by way of having a platform to speak on the behalf of, and by way of making sure my constitutional rights and privileges are honored, which is why you hear me, who stands a lot of times with people on the left, say, I don't give a fuck what them niggas talking about. I'm not giving up my gun for nobody because the Second Amendment promises me that. I speak and say what I like because the First Amendment promises me that. So Mike, but, so Mike, oh, so Mike no, 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 I don't want you to stop. What I want you to do is tell me about the process 
because you you and Bernie have been riding hard, but I'm yeah. interested in knowing what was the conversation so but that it's he bigger could... than Bernie. We're gonna keep it local. I'm talking about Atlanta. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, if you're enjoying this debate, then please don't forget to chuck a like on the video, help your boy out, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because if you get value from this content, then that is all we do here. Back to the clips. And what I mean is Atlanta is a black city that succeeded with non-black, well, with black, but non-black total agreement. We had a black paper here that was owned by black Republicans that helped the SCLC promote, which was owned by black liberals. We had black ministers who were ultimately conservative and told Dr. King when he was a young man in the late 50s, hey, I want to start this civil rights campaign. They said, there's Alabama, take your ass on down there and go. It did start in Atlanta because Atlanta niggas had some money and they was a little bougie. It started outside Atlanta and came back with young people. So young people, the old people now who you disagree with once were young. And because they did things like took bullets, took beatings, took bashes to the brain, you have that opportunity. So absolutely, goddamn lootly, there's a blood oath that's been made. There's been a blood oath made in every American. When we learned about the American Revolution in Collier Heights Elementary in an all-black neighborhood, we did not learn about a white country that simply used us as slaves. We learned that the first person to die on the behalf of this country was a black man named Christmas Addicts. That gives a sense of pride to a black boy. Well, what happens to that black boy then? That little motherfucker grows up and goes to Frederick Douglass High School. Frederick Douglass is the most photographed person of the 19th century, a person who worked with both Democrats and Republicans, who helped free not only black people, but women. He said in 1865, women and black people deserve the right to vote. But I wouldn't know that had I not been educated by a syllabus that was given from Clark University and Dr. Asa Yilia. I am, I am, what you see when you see me and you see Tip Harris is the product of black excellence. We didn't wake up and a nigga start using big words and we sing and dance and all of a sudden we got it figured out. This is a process. Based. But notice there how he doesn't get much applause when he says that he loves America and when he says that he's for the First and Second Amendment. You see, normally, and you see this with woke leftist politicians, they will bash America in order to pander to the audience, get cheap brownie points and applause and sell victimhood. Not Killer Mike though, he is a man of principle and a force of nature for that matter. He is preaching a message of empowerment and taking control of your own life and your community and looking at history, not through the lens of just being a perpetual victim, but recognizing that African Americans have made immense contributions to that great nation. It's something to be proud of. Very wise message from a man who was wise enough to refuse to back Hillary Clinton in 2016, based. And now let's watch things start to heat up as Candace Owens comes to the party and watch very closely at the reaction she is getting, not only from the panel, but also to the crowd. Listen to their hostility. Same thing on, on the other side. How are we negotiating? What is the negotiating tactics so that we're not acquiescing to somebody else's agenda, but being clear about ours in the process of giving them our support? Well, I would say the first thing is that it's important to identify what our agenda actually is. And I think that the most important thing for people in this room to understand is that there is a very small window. Right now, the black vote is the most important vote in the country. There's a very small window before our vote's not going to matter. These conferences won't matter, matter and us sitting here won't matter because illegal immigration, if you're looking at the numbers, every new birth in this country, 60% of all new births are Hispanic Americans. And the Democrats are about, you, listen, listen, you're, you're saying, mm, uh, let, me, let, me, let me get to the point. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with it. They are, I, I say illegal is the new black because it's true. And there's a reason why they're, they're advocating for open borders. Right now, our vote means a lot, but new births of black Americans have stagnated. The population growth within black America has stagnated. So the things that I pay attention to are the numbers. I pay attention to the birth rates in this country, which is why I'm, I'm pro putting something down to stop illegal immigration. The second thing that I think is really important, and you may have heard me testify in front of Congress, is the illiteracy rates that are facing black America. 75% of black boys in California can't pass a reading exam. Across Baltimore, they looked at five schools, they couldn't find a single black boy that was, that was a, a single black child that could pass a basic reading or a math exam. So people, I caught a lot of slack because I, I said, this is a Democrat plantation, but I meant what I said. 
If you look historically at what the plantations were when we were slaves, there were three things that were necessary for them to run. The first was our ignorance. Black Americans were not allowed to learn how to read unless we would have our limbs chopped off. And that was because an educated mind cannot be enslaved. So the fact that our education, that our schools are in this condition in the inner cities and all throughout America and not a single candidate is talking about it is problematic to me. I think that that's a huge negotiating tool for me. We need to be talking about the inner city schools. Another component, and this is the biggest issue that I think is facing black America today, which was important to uh, maintaining the plantations, was the breakdown of family. The biggest issue facing black America is father absence. We have children that are growing up without their fathers in the home, and that is being incentivized by the government right now via the welfare system. When the government says we'll give you more money if you don't marry the father of your children, you are incentivizing bad behavior in our community. What happens when you remove a father from the home? This is why I do not mess with feminism at all. I'm not with it. This breakdown and mocking masculinity, making it seem like there's something wrong to be a man, all of this contributes to the breakdown of family. When you right, remove- hey, 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 hold on. So, hold on, brother, hold on. You can't imagine how much courage it took for Candace to get up and do this. Normally people won't go and debate in front of hostile crowds like this, but not Candace. She is about this life. But what's more impressive is that she comes out guns a blazing, doesn't pull her punches and hits them with the facts, such as the fact that illegal immigration affects African-American communities disproportionately. Where do illegal aliens tend to go? They tend to go into lower socioeconomic communities. And they'll also take a lot of jobs in these areas as well. She also mentioned education. There are alarming illiteracy rates in these inner city communities. And obviously, if you want to ascend up the socioeconomic hierarchy, you need to be educated. And then of course, the breakdown of the family. And if you've listened to enough of Candace Owens, or if you've read the work of Thomas Sowell, you'll realize how much of a problem this is. You'll know that in the 1940s, African-Americans were one of the fastest growing groups. They were thriving. And then they were crippled by the welfare systems, a part of the Great Society Act in the 1960s. And then they were hit even harder by the crack cocaine epidemic of the 80s. And that is still raging today. But more to the point about families, there is a 75% rate of single motherhood in the African-American community. That is just beyond catastrophic. And as you may have noticed, some bozo is yelling at Candace from the crowd. And this one is about to take a surprising turn. There's gonna be an opportunity for each of you to engage, but I wanna make sure this sister has the right to talk while she's here. That's why we invited her. So it's let her okay. say what she needs to say. And then let's keep it moving. Come on, y'all. The, the single motherhood rate in the 1960s in black America, and they, th they, they thought that... Now, at a... The hold single, on, hold on. At a I want to finish no, this. No, no, I'm, I'm, this is on your behalf. At a certain point, we can't be assholes. At a, at a certain point, these are black men and women, and in particular, these are black women. Like, I, like, on, on some real G shit, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how you feel about her personally. Everything she has just said, Louis Farrakhan said for the last 25 fucking years. So, 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 uh, so, with no, and, and I don't know if she's a fan of Farrakhan, I know me and Tamika are, bam. But, but, you cannot take the truth and be mad at who tells it to you. So just chill, bruh, shut the fuck up, let her say it, and receive the information. That's it. Absolutely boss there by Killer Mike. And that's what a real man does. When there's somebody on the stage who's trying to have the debate in good faith and wanting to bring value to the conversation and somebody is obnoxiously screaming at her from the crowd, you tell them where to go. It's just a Chad thing to do. Especially after the host was like, come on now, brother. Hold on, brother, hold on. No, no, sorry. The correct response to childish outbursts is shut the hell up, you idiot. Let the lady speak. And now, Candace has the floor. I apologize, I digress. Thank you. Mike, thank you so much Listen. for saying what I, want, I, I want you to, But I want say. you to continue, because I, I was listening. Yeah, so, I mean, I've been turned into publicly, public enemy number one. I say the same thing when I hit every stage. The single motherhood rate in, in, the, in the black community in the 1960s, before uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson started the Great Society Act, was 23%. At that time, that was considered very high. 23% of black people growing up without a father in a home. 
The single, father, the single motherhood rate in the black community today is 74%. 74% of our children are growing up without a father in the home. It was Barack Obama, who I don't even really like, you know, have anything for, who told you what happens when you remove a father from the home. You're nine times more likely to end up in prison. You're six times more likely to drop out a bar, uh, drop out of high school, um, and you're 12 times more likely to lead a life of poverty. Why is nobody talking about father absence, and why do we keep being silenced when we actually do? Black. This is this is what black conservatism is, by the way. It's really not. It's not that controversial. So let me I genuinely think Candace Owens probably red pilled a few people in the room that night, and maybe converted a few into conservatives, or at least she would have planted the seed. But that's what happens when Candace is allowed to speak without being screamed at, or when you're not being introduced to her via some Buzzfeed or Vice article. And who knows, maybe a few of these people in the audience would have thought, hey, maybe these conservatives want the best for us. I mean, they're doing a pretty good job of diagnosing some of the issues. They're doing a decent job of pointing out the problems, and they have some solutions that don't sound half bad. But also, maybe not. And now let's get into the next part where Candace Owens and T.I. start to take the gloves off and throw haymakers at each other. And then some other lady from the panel starts to come in and do the Trump racist orange man badge dick before Candace just goes into full Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan mode. I had a question for both of you young ladies and you and Candace, we spoke many times and you're extremely, you're a brilliant young lady. Um, and, and But my question to you is, how is it that you can support yourself, I mean, that you can support and align with uh, a constituency that will not denounce white supremacy? He, uh, uh, so that means your son, your son or daughter or, your, or, 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 or any of your brothers or any of your family members, if they are caught out there by a policeman who is in a, a covert, undercover white supremacist and get gunned down, this constituency will have absolutely nothing to say about Please it. Let so me answer this question. Please let me answer this question. That's let me what answer I don't this understand. Question. And true. we can't, and although what you're saying is abs a lot of the things that you're saying are absolutely factual, a lot of the things that you're saying yeah. have merit, but I can't even get to that before I address, I will address the it right disregard now. I will address for young it right black now. lives I love and it. we will not I love speak it. up on it at love all. I love this question. I will address it. All of the it. things yeah, that you I spoke on from Opportunity Zones. I love that to, we're talking about white supremacy. Okay, I'll answer me. the question. I, I say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I, I, I didn't interrupt you. You're right, you're right, you're right. If you're I may, right, you're right, you're right. if I may. Right, so to tackle the white supremacy thing, your question was a fallacy because you said they, they you, you insinuated that he has not denounced white supremacy. He hasn't. Go to his, somebody please, go to his Twitter feed right now. Right now, he go said, back to the shootings. The KKK? He said, no, 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 because we gotta tell the truth. He I said, do not stop. The KKK? Don't you, now you're cutting said? me off, right? There we go. Now we're even. What he said was that. So listen. What he said was that there was good. No, no, no. Let me finish. Stop, supremacy. stop, stop. That's because what he you guys said. are so That's hung up said. on That's Charlottesville, he said. and nobody heard the entire clip. I want to talk about why we get manipulated. I'm being serious, guys. I'm not even trying to make this like a contentious moment, because this is literally why Black America loses right here. Why? Because we allow stupid? people with cameras to go hear a whole speech, like they do this to me all the time. They take out a couple of sentences you said, and they create a whole new headline. And people that were not there get incensed and get emotional, and don't actually go back to hear what was actually said in full context. They do it to me all the time. I know they do it to Trump. He has denounced white supremacy so many times. He, it, it, it's something north, somebody counted, of 24 times, and it's on his Twitter feed. So if you want to fact check me, go back to a couple of weeks ago when the shootings happened. He said, America is no place for white nationalism and white supremacy, and it's an issue that has to be tackled. I'm paraphrasing, you can go find it. Although so I want to that first. Secondly, nationalist. secondly, he calls secondly, himself wait, 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 a nationalist. Hold on, hold on, hold on, stop, hold on, hold on. stop, stop. You, you can fact check me. I'm either lying to your face, you can go on Twitter right now. Right. You can do it live. So which secondly, one do you want us to believe? The first thing he says, or what he says after no, no, the media no, no, comes after no, him. No, I'm talking about you. Because he, the first stop, thing stop, he Tika, said was that there Tika, was... you're asking a different question than T.I. did. T.I. Okay. said, how can you work with an administration that has never, that has never denounced white supremacy? You're talking about Charlottesville? I'm talking about talking points that come out later. But what he starts with is racism. That's no, what comes no, out no. his mouth when he starts. See? 
We and let me tell you something. How many mass and let me, shootings and let me tell you, and, and let me tell you why the black vote is the easiest vote for Democrats to keep for the last 60 years. All they have to do to get our vote. Let me tell you something. If, they, if people know what you fear, you are the easiest person to control. The Democrats have figured out that black America is emotionally responsive to the word racism. She says racism, you jump up and you start cheering. You haven't even listened to what I've said to rebut it, okay? Don't cheer. But, but it's the, but 100%, wait, 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 The biggest wait, issue, let me finish, let me finish. The biggest issue facing black America is not white supremacy. When Trump said there were good people on both sides, he was talking about the fact that some people that were in the Charlottesville rally, and he could have paraphrased that better, he could have said something better, literally came there because they don't believe that statues should be torn down, okay? Other people came there because they were upset that amongst the, people, amongst the people that came there to watch the statue be torn down were also white nationalists. So what he meant was there were some people that were just there using their First Amendment right. There were some people that were there to respond to the white nationalists and a big mess happened. I'm not trying to defend him or relitigate a situation. I'm saying that being hung up on that is allowing you to not look at an administration that is tackling so many issues in black America right now. I do not consider myself a Republican. I do not, I definitely am not a Democrat, but Trump woke me up. I used to be liberal. Trump woke me up wow. to the idea that we're being manipulated by the word racism every four years. So wait, 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 every wait, wait, four wait, years. wait, 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 They call everybody on. racist. All right. Candace Owens committed a mass homicide that night. And it's one of the great debate moments because she's literally under fire from all angles. I mean, Killer Mike is the only one treating her with any respect, but like Scarface at the top of the stairs, she comes out with a machine gun of facts and an attitude to go with it. And she takes their bullets and fires back. But guys, there's more. It's not over. All right, we're going to get into this because what I'm, what I'm concerned about is how is that any different than the fear that Trump has exactly. created in poor whites? Exactly. That, that, the fear that Trump has lifted in poor whites yeah. that black people and poor yeah. urban people are their problem. Right. When, when did so, Trump ever say that? That's, that's, a, that's a fallacy. When did Trump ever say black people are Make the problem? Make America great again. That's when he said it. Guys, that but was But I'm not on the panel. That so was I Ronald make sure. Reagan's slogan. Was that racist when Ronald Slagan had it as a slogan? Yes, what time? It was. Yes, let me ask oh, you. Oh, so that's, Whoa, that please slogan answer this. is racist. Please answer this. I have a question. So, I have a question. So wait, please, wait, wait. Tip, please just tip, allow me this one outburst. Please. I have a question. When you say make America great again, which period are we talking about? The period when women couldn't vote? The period when we were hanging from trees? I'll answer. Or, or, or like the crack era? Which period in America are you trying to make I, America I would, like again? So I, I actually think that I would, I would totally rock a hat right now that said make black America great again. Because black no, America, make America before, we're talking about make America. Hat, that wasn't the question. I, answer, I am answering Which your question. Which period was America great that we're trying to replicate? Well, well, Which I, era was it? Tell me. I think I'll answer your question. Tell I'm, me. I'm ready to answer your question. Which era was it? What? Which era was so great? You, here's the thing that you guys are forgetting. America was actually one of the first. Slavery was all over the world. The all question. over the world. America Man, was, I'm not, I'm not saying it's okay, so why are you saying, oh? Hey, Amen. America you was one of the first to countries. I want to fight you so bad. I'm trying you're to answer so your question. Smart. I want right, to like you so much. I can't answer the I question. I want to hear you. I want to be able to hear them. If, 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 I want to be I able to hear them. If I can't answer the question and you're just going to boo when I say a, a slavery was all over the world, which is a fact, why are you booing a fact? Finish because you're point. making light of... No, I'm not. You're making light I of haven't the gotten enslavement to my points. I'm not making, of people that look like us. You can't make right. light of that. That ain't nothing you breeze over. I haven't even over. finished the sentence. How am I making you light of anything? You started with some bullshit. Okay. So, Candace, we can, Candace, hold on, wait, 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 wait. We wait. can be emotional, so, Candace, we can wait, boo, wait, no, you no, no, can no, cheer, no, no, but I'm on, telling you right on. now, the black Candace, vote is not going to matter so my, after the next about Ka five years if you Katrina, don't start paying attention Katrina, to what I'm saying to you. Katrina, because I'm trying to tell Katrina, you guys the truth. Candace, the absolute truth about you. what is happening in black America. You are being used, abused, and lied to, and manipulated emotionally by the Democrat Party. That is what I am here to tell you. And, you want to keep uprising and talking about racism when they're taking our fathers out of the home, when they're making welfare. You said that already. No, no, no. We but got you. Because so we're cool, seeing it happen man. right Hold here. On right cool, here. I'm telling that. you it. And you're being you. responsive because I, I can't finish a sentence so, about what Katrina, I was going to say Katrina, about slavery. Disagree. Katrina. Everyone in totality disagrees. Because you thought it was so bullshit. Oh, and that's, that's culture, man. That's not Katrina, intellectual. Yeah. That's culture. I need you to come in. I need you to come in because... So that says a lot about T.R. He's happy to go after Candace in this situation 
and he's certainly got a lot to say here. It's very easy for him to be on home turf and to be just yelling racism and that's some bullshit to rapturous applause from the audience. But try that anywhere else. Why don't you go onto a conservative show and see how that garbage is received or even a neutral debate night. The fact of the matter is that you could never get away with it. But that's why this part of the debate is particularly egregious because it just lacks honor. It's such a bully move, as far as one is able to bully Candace Owens, that is. And now let's look at some final words from Killer Mike, who presents a very interesting message and a very powerful message with a lot of historical context as well. What y'all are seeing right now are free people arguing over who got the best master. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. So, we're going to go back to silent. Let's register this shit back down. We're going to lock this back down. So I'll tell you when America was great. Seven years after the ending of the Civil War. Exactly what oh, I'm Candace, because you, you didn't give the comment. So you weren't prepared for that one. Seven, no, but that's, that's not to jump on Candace, because again, I'm disagreeing with my friend. Seven years after the end of the Civil War, blacks within seven to 15 years accumulated over 15 million acres of land. Since, hold on, before we get to clapping, because the niggas bought some shit. <laughs> Black people were the only skilled labor in there. So if it was welding to be done, iron bending, cotton picking, it was black people. So instantly, your value became more. And Candace has a point. The point that she made about illegal immigration affecting you is that it's going to affect you at some point. Why? If the Kegel Chicken Factory is hiring illegally illegal immigrants at an undercut on the rate, it affects the black people who live there who should be demanding 20 bucks an hour because they're being undercut. So when they get wiped out, they have to hire blacks, pay them, and unionize. So she's right on that. But hold the fuck on, I'm not finished. <laughs> you have to remember that People who look like you immigrate too. So before you widely say, fuck them all, remember, America is always going to have a slave class. And if illegal immigrants or legal immigrants will not be the lowest paid workers, those in prison will be, and that always ends up looking like one of their sons. So it circles back around. So that's why people who are black, who are from two different plantations, gotta get the fuck away from Massa Long enough to say, how are we going to burn down both their fucking houses? Now, this is my thought. This is my thought. I don't care if you destroy the Republican or Democratic Party, because at one time, blacks were Republicans. And you dominated those seven years after, civil, after, civil, um, after the Civil War. You were Republicans. You had more blacks in the House and Senate than you do now. And you dominated your own economic communities. You did that as Republicans. As Democrats, you did the same in cities like Atlanta. You failed in other cities. But the most important thing is self-organizing. By the time we get to a candidate, we should have a list that says white man, white woman, these are our demands. You can meet them and get our vote or not, and we're going to stay home and crochet and make collard greens. But what you cannot do <laughs> is continue to argue over who is the best master. I don't give a fuck if it's Trump, Obama, your mama, my mama. What the fuck do you have for me and my community? now? If you do not, and if you stop playing, if you stop playing, oh, I'm going to say the snazziest shit to each other on stage. I'm going to show that motherfucker this is going to be a quotable. And we close up the doors, and we simply say, how do we take the good of what you have, the good of what you have, the good of what you have and you have, how do we shape it into a 10-point agenda? So a great performance there by Killer Mike, and also Candice can't say the same for the rest of the panelists. A few of them are actually about as valuable as pot plants on the stage, but that's just the way things go sometimes. And if you guys would like to hit those links below and come and find me everywhere, you can definitely do that. If you would like to subscribe to the channel right here, and if you'd like to watch another video, click right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.